Welcome back to 10 of the Best, where I showcase 10 titles that I've personally played about with and thought were really neat. Today's video is about community source ports and engine recreations. I've talked about them and total conversions recently and in glowing terms. They're a great way to inject all the benefits of modern gaming into your classic titles. For the purpose of this list, a source port is where someone has taken the source code that has been made freely available for a game and transplanted it into a new engine without expecting payment for it. So commercial ventures like Command & Conquer Remastered and Outcast won't be listed here. An engine recreation is where some coding wizard has created a new engine for the game's original assets to run on that operates the same as, or like an enhanced version of, the original game engine. There's only 10 slots, and only titles I've played extensively and can vouch for will be listed, so there will be some obvious omissions. Let's go! Number 10. EC Wolf Released back in the hazy days of 2012, EC Wolf is a one-man effort to create a source port for Wolfenstein 3D, then Spear of Destiny, and now Super, Super 3D, 3D Noah's, Noah's Ark! Ark. It's based off the Wolf 4 SDL code with a substantial amount of code courtesy of the ZDoom project. The result is a smoother and more enjoyable Wolf experience with widescreen capabilities, mod support, graphical and rendering improvements, and even auto mapping. It really is the definitive way to play all three of these titles on more modern systems. If you're a fan of the project, this is one of the rare cases where you can actually aid them financially. How? By picking up a digital copy of Super, Super 3D, 3D Noah's, Noah's Ark, Ark today. today! Number 9. OpenRA OpenRA is an engine platform for rebuilding and reimagining classic RTS games. I also did a video about this great project not that long ago. Written in C Sharp and Lua, they've not only rebuilt a multiplayer gaming scene for Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert, but also managed to provide a base from which other great RTS titles are benefiting. Rather than just offering widescreen support and calling it a day, OpenRA also includes control upgrades for those more familiar with modern RTS movement. The result is a new home for almost forgotten titles like Alien Swarm and the likes of KKND, plus an opportunity for games that were never released like Hard Vacuum to finally get a chance to be played. Or you could just play Command & Conquer with it. Number 8. New Dark New Dark is a fascinating story. In 2012, an anonymous user on a French forum called Le Corbeau, or The Raven, released an updated executable for Thief 1 and 2 and System Shock 2 called New Dark that ran almost flawlessly on modern systems. The kicker? Nobody knows who The Raven is or how they did it. They're completely anonymous and have been almost solely responsible for the recent resurrection of these critically acclaimed Looking Glass Studios games, to the point that Night Dive Studios included the fixes in the commercial re-release of System Shock 2. I've made multiple aborted attempts at playing both Thief and System Shock 2 in the past, sinking plenty of hours into them. And despite my issues with mechanics, the positive takeaway I get from these experiences is, wow, this looks real pretty for an old game. Partly that's because of the excellent design team at Looking Glass Studios at the time, but the rest is entirely down to the modernization efforts of the Raven. Number 7. Corsix TH Ever wanted to play Theme Hospital in widescreen? Yes? Corsix TH. This engine re-implementation brings a hospital management sim to other platforms, and spruces up the game by making it more stable. Because of the game's cartoonish graphics, it's aged exceedingly well, and this engine makes everything sparkle. Sure, there are a handful of things still missing like rats and patients falling over, but the entire game can be played from start to finish without any major issues. A very enjoyable experience until your hospital starts spiralling out of control and the dead bodies begin to mount up. Number 6. Riz and Eduke32 for those not in the know, the build engine was Ken Silverman's answer to id Tech 1, and pars all kinds of great shooters like Blood, Shadow Warrior, William Shatter's Tech War, and some other important one I can't quite recall currently. Eduke32 has for a very long time been the definitive engine replacement for build games, 
and has resulted in a load of splinter engines that utilize its near miraculous improvements to the original source code. So that's why this entry is a plug for that particular engine replacement too. Reyes decided to build upon that code and house all the other spin-off projects under one engine with unified GZ Doom enhancements. So rather than shopping around for specific offshoots of eduke 32 or build GDX or other build engine ports, you can find most of them in one spot with the GZ Doom renderer and sound engines lending a hand. It's a bizarre marriage of Doom and Duke that I never thought would happen or work, but 2020 was a very strange year to say the least. And most importantly, it plays very well indeed. Number 5. Daggerfall Unity One of the most impressive recreations in modern times, Daggerfall Unity replaces the old XL engine with a Unity-based alternative. The result is an astonishing improvement with better controls and user interface, a much higher frame rate and higher resolutions. That's the tip of the iceberg though, because Daggerfall is an early Elder Scrolls title. The good folks behind Unity decided to make the recreation mod friendly as a result. I've already gushed lyrically about this in another video, calling it a stunning achievement overall because it is, and you should definitely check it out. Number 4. GZ Doom Z Doom wasn't the first Doom source port, and many would argue that it's not the best either, as it doesn't stay entirely true to the mechanics of id Tech 1. It was discontinued in 2016 in favour of GZ Doom, its natural successor, and if you want to play a Doom Engine game, this is the most popular for a reason. Supporting an absolute boatload of games and making them play however you want, GZ Doom's flexibility and ease of use mean that whether you want a super modernized version of a classic or just don't want to mess around with DOS, it should be your first port of call for revitalizing anything from Heretic to Hax to Hexen. Number 3. Free Space 2 Open and the Source Code Project In 2002, with no future for Free Space in sight, Dave Filoni released the source code for the underselling yet critically acclaimed space combat sim Free Space 2 on a non-commercial license. The Free Space 2 source code project was formed shortly after, with the goal of enhancing and upgrading the engine using this code as a base. The results of almost 20 years of hard work absolutely blew me away when I first played it, and like most great projects, the modding community had subsequently sprung up around it with great custom campaigns, total conversions, and launchers making it easy to enjoy the improvements. What this led to was the likes of FS Port, a straight up conversion of the original Free Space into the Free Space 2 engine, and more ambitious community projects like Blue Ocean and Silent Threat Reborn that attempted to retell or continue the story of the original game. Now instead of a game that was bought by so few upon release and then forgotten about, there is instead a community of great pilots and amazing modders, keeping the spirit of Volition's space combat series alive. Number 2. Open TTD In 1994, Chris Sawyer wrote a game called Transport Tycoon, employing the talents of a few designers and John Broomhall for music. This expansion of the original Railroad Tycoon into the isometric perspective, coupled with the influence of SimCity 2000, led to the most addictive and incredible business management sim ever created. Then he went and improved it further with a deluxe edition the following year. For over a decade it stood unopposed as game after game tried and failed to capture its glory including Sawyer's own return to the genre with Locomotion. By then, a genius called Ludwig Strigius decided it'd be a cool idea to write a modern engine for the title, under the name OpenTTD. Initially, this ran exactly the same as Transport Tycoon, but with the benefit of hindsight, the team that sprung up around it added not only technical improvements like widescreen and multiple platform support, but in-game improvements like better signaling and AI, the ability to buy your competitors out, and many other features that came as a result of playing thousands of hours of the game. With open source replacements for the tileset and music, OpenTTD became its own game outright, building upon the original idea in a reverential way and without straying too far from the core concepts. 
Whether you subscribe to these improvements or not was entirely up to you. With the ability to use the original graphics and music never lost. With AI developed that even mimic the original. So whether you want an authentic 90s experience or a souped up spiritual successor, this engine recreation has you covered. Number 1. Scum VM Remember Ludwig Strigius from a previous entry? This is his greatest achievement. Much like how OpenTTD was a replacement engine for Transport Tycoon, ScumVM is an engine replacement for the scripting behind an enormous number of point-and-click adventure games. To the point where the VM at the end of the name, standing for Virtual Machine, is entirely merited. Initially, ScumVM set out to emulate the scripting engine behind LucasArts adventure games allowing them to look and sign their absolute best on multiple platforms with hardware mouse control. It didn't end there though, and support expanded into the entire genre as a whole, with adventure games from other companies like Sierra and Westwood getting the Scum VM treatment, as each interpreter was provided with an open source equivalent. Scum VM would automatically detect the titles and present them in a list, making it the one-stop shop for all your point-and-click adventure gaming needs. Improved scalers, sound font support, MT32 emulation integration, iMuse, emulation of higher definition Windows versions of selected titles. The project grew and grew as more fans of the genre discovered it and offered to help. These days, ScumVM isn't just limited to adventure titles, with the likes of Lands of Lore and Might and Magic 3 proving that even RPGs can run in the engine. There's no telling just how far this glorious achievement will go, but it's an utter pleasure watching each subsequent update extend its reach that little bit further into preserving even more games for systems that never had the opportunity to experience a native release.